very quickly, I want to go over a few of the performance improvements Drupal 8 has over Drupal 7. The developers working on Drupal 8 have done a lot of work to make this content management system be as fast as it can be. That's important, especially for something like Drupal that's so complex, that has so many things going on at any given time, because it could really get bogged down in all of that if it wasn't optimized in certain ways to be fast. Earlier in the tutorial, we talked about different types of caching. We talked about the modules that manage that caching, specifically the internal dynamic page cache, which caches pages for any user, is a big caching improvement over Drupal 7. If we remember, the dynamic page cache, as it caches pages for any user, that includes logged in users or authenticated users. So Drupal 7 was only capable of caching pages for anonymous users, because when you have users that are logged in, you may have things like the user's name or other user-specific information on the page, and Drupal 7 did not have a way to cache those pages since they were different for various logged in users. It could only cache pages for anonymous users because if you're not logged in, then the page looks the same for everyone in most cases. Drupal 8 does have a system for caching information for logged in users, so it's able to do that, and that's a big improvement. If we go to configuration and back to the performance page. One small but really effective thing that Drupal 8 does is it turns on CSS and JavaScript aggregation by default. So you don't have to remember to come in over here and turn this on manually because there's almost no case where you don't want to aggregate your CSS and JavaScript files. Again, when your site's delivering multiple CSS and JavaScript files, it's best to bundle them together into a lower number of files so that the browser visiting your site has to do less back and forth retrieving all of those files. So this is now turned on by default. Also, Drupal 8's file aggregation is just a little bit better than Drupal 7's. Drupal 7 had some cases where it wasn't aggregating files in the most efficient way, and Drupal 8 improves on that. One thing that's been really helpful that probably should have been in Drupal 7, but it just wasn't, is that JavaScript, for the most part, is loaded at the bottom of the page. Let me show you what I mean by this. If we view the page source, so we do see in our head tag one JavaScript file right here. But if we scroll all the way down, we'll also see a couple more JavaScript files that aren't loaded until the rest of the page loads. This is good for performance because in most cases, the JavaScript doesn't need to come into play until the page is finished loading. In fact, in many cases, the code is written so that the JavaScript specifically waits for the entire page to load, and then it starts doing whatever it's supposed to do. So when you have these files at the top of the page, when the browser would receive this information from the server, it would say, okay, I need to download this and this and this and this, and then I need to download this, these few JavaScript files here. That slows down the loading of the page, especially the things that come after the downloading of these CSS and JavaScript files. It's still important to have CSS at the top in most cases so that everything loads properly. But for the JavaScript, that's not going to come into play anyway until the page is done loading. There's no reason to front load all of that work when the browser could be downloading actual content instead, and then when it gets to the end, it downloads the JavaScript files that are going to wait for the page to finish loading anyway, and then it executes them and does whatever they are supposed to do. This was something that probably drove a lot of SEO specialists a little bit crazy with Drupal 7, but now it's been improved for Drupal 8, and it works very well. I hope this tutorial has given you some insight into the things at play in Drupal 8, the things that can affect performance, the different types of caching that you can use to speed up your site, and the various techniques in general that can be used to speed up your Drupal 8 site.